Today, I'm going to Kyoto. And now I'm in Kyoto. That train ride on the Shinkansen is so choice. It's like 450 kilometers or something. You do it in three hours. It's one train, it's super smooth. And how much did it cost? I think it was like 120, 130 dollars or something one way. So it's not like, it's not like a free train ride or anything. But I mean, like, I realized I'm on transportation and I find it relaxing. <laughs> it's so worth it. This is so nice. You get your ticket in a machine, you sit down on the train, whatever, you eat your snacks, it's no big deal. You look out the window, Mount Fuji cruises by, and it's just like you're on the bullet train looking at Mount Fuji, and every time it happens, it's still like, yeah, this is awesome. So I got all the way to Kyoto, and I, uh, my hotel was like uh, about 20 minute walk from the station, which is not a big deal in Kyoto because it's like a really flat city, like grid layout, it's easy to get around. So I just took my cart, my, my little bag that I got with me this time. I've never traveled with this bag before, but so far it's going all right. And I uh, dropped it off at my hotel, which actually didn't have any people at it. Like, so I just like put a note on in my bag and stuck it behind a desk. So uh, it'll be all right. And I don't know, what time is it? I didn't even like rush out the door and it's two o'clock and I'm like free. I don't have anything, you know what I mean? I don't have any other encumbrances for the day. So um, the next thing I gotta do, I guess is I try to find some lunch. And there's a zillion things around here, but I do wonder how many of them I'm gonna run into that are like Corona closed because Kyoto is like tourist Mecca. Like a lot of tourists come here. So since the pandemic has happened, it's just been like really quiet. And that's a big part of the reason that I'm down here is because I wanted to see it like this because it's a unique opportunity to see Kyoto without a whole lot of people around. And the reason that I am not with Katie is because she is busy for the weekend and will be joining me on Monday. Today is, I don't know, Thursday or something? So she'll be joining me on Monday, but we'll be meeting in Totori where we're gonna go and we're gonna do some filming in Totori and uh, there'll be a series of videos about that coming as well. But anyway, yeah, let's get some grub. Looking for this little ramen restaurant. I'm just like going up this road. Keep walking back and forth, looking for road I'm supposed to turn off of. The road that I'm supposed to find this ramen restaurant on is this little guy here, <laughs> this little alleyway. So as I kept walking past it, I was like, where's the street? And well, <laughs> it's not really a street. Of course, on these little streets, alleyways, streets, <laughs> you find the coolest little places and there's a bunch of little restaurants scattered down here. And the reason I come over here is because I looked for a decent ramen place that was near where I was staying, or staring, where I was standing when I was talking earlier. And uh, this was the one that was looking the best. So I'm gonna pop in here and see what I can do. But you see this thing here? This is the door. <laughs> you see how much taller I am than this door? <laughs> you gotta like go in on your knees. I'm fed. So sometimes you go into a place and it's like, it's too quiet in there to make a video. <laughs> like It was like a library in there. And when I was eating, it was really full of people. So that's why I didn't film any like immediate, this is what this tastes like type of thing that you know normally we would do. If it's gonna bother a bunch of folks, I just avoid it. And that was totally the situation we were in. However, it was a weird vibe, like in a good way. When you go in that tiny little door, there's this a hallway and the hallway goes down to a machine that like you buy your ticket for your Rama, but it's like a computer. It's not just like one of the ones that you put your money in and push the button. It's like you go through a menu system and stuff on this computer and then it can take your change and it spits it all out and it does it all automatically. So it feels kind of like high tech, which is kind of weird because you're in Kyoto, which kind of feels like not high tech because it's like, it's kind of like got a lot old vibe going on. Right. And this restaurant definitely is holding on to that old vibe, but with a modern spin, weirdly. Like it's just, it's a weird combination of things. So after you get your ticket, you go outside again, but you're in the like backyard and then that loops around and you then can go into the actual restaurant to sit. And the, 
seating is all like along where they're cooking the food. So you're just sitting at a counter, it's counter seating, but it's really like posh feeling in a way. The food itself was very good, but it's not something that I particularly like that much. It was a ramen and I got a yuzu based ramen and I could hardly detect yuzu because the base of the ramen that they use is like what they use in a lot of tsukemen where it can be kind of a fishy flavor. And I don't hate this flavor, but it's just not my favorite. And in this particular dish, there was also like some chashu in it. So like chunks of meat. And it was mostly just like a really fatty little blocks of meat. So it wasn't like, I wouldn't like say that this was my particular favorite bowl of noodles ever, but it's a bit cold out today. So it felt good to have noodles. And it was something I normally wouldn't order. And I just went YOLO and did it. I'm happy I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think they're doing a good job and the atmosphere and everything is dope, but it's just not like, it's not my bowl of noodles, that's all. This is not my first visit to Kyoto. I think it's been here maybe four, maybe five times, something like that. But I don't come down here often. I mean, I've lived here in Japan for 10 years, so like four or five times is not that much. So I'm kind of like familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the things that are here, but it's like, I kind of feel a little bit like I don't know where I am, like at the same time. Kyoto definitely has got a cool vibe. And one of the things that's cool about the vibe in Kyoto is this Shoten guy that I just randomly stumbled in. And I've been to the Shoten guy before. Shoten guy is like uh, usually covered. You can see that it's covered above me. Walking street with a lot of little shops and stuff like that. And I've definitely been over here before. I recognize some of the stuff, but I've never seen it like with so few people, even though it's still a little bit crowded and it mostly feels that way because it's narrow. But it gives me an opportunity to stop and actually look at some of the things that I've never looked at here before. And there's a lot of like little snacks and lots of like really traditionally Japanese snacks and things like that. And some things that I looked at and I was like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> like never seen this. And then there's some people selling, like a lady was selling wasabi and there are people selling knickknacks. And there's a couple of touristy shops in here. And I think it does have a big touristy draw, but I think it's still like got this authentic feel, which might be why it actually still maintains a touristy draw. Makes me wonder if that might be why some of these shops, like they were all open, everything seems fine right now, but perhaps it survived because it probably has more of a draw for domestic tourism than it does for international tourists. I think a lot of international tourists would be like, I don't even know anything what I'm looking at. But you know, Japanese people see things like, oh yeah, that's like the Meibutsu or whatever from this area, the, 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 the special thing from this region or whatever. And they're familiar with it, at least from television or something. But yeah, really cool little vibe. And that's the first thing I'm happy I got to see without massive amounts of crowds. Part of what makes Kyoto unique is that it has been a cultural center in the country for basically ever, to the point of where it has been the capital in the past, and just a lot of Japanese culture in general has spun out of the Kyoto region, and specifically out of the city. The part about it that makes it especially unique, even over other cities that are also like strong with culture and have cultural centers to them, is that Kyoto wasn't destroyed during World War II. So a lot of the things that other cities had that were just completely flattened during the end of World War II, Kyoto still has. So you can come here and it's almost like stepping back in time to a degree and seeing the way that, you know, Japan pre-war actually looked and the way that things felt and stuff. And of course, a lot of it has been modernized, but there's still way more older buildings and way more architecture and way more older shrines and stuff that are like actually still old as opposed to being rebuilt like Sensoji or something. Uh, that you can see here that you just can't see anywhere else in the country. I'm just walking down the street. I don't know if what I've come across is something that would even be on a normal map or not. It's a normal modern-ish street. And then all of a sudden there's a little shrine and this isn't totally unique. You'll see things like this in other cities. But the reason this one caught my eye was actually because it caught my nose. There's a bunch of incense burning and it's kind of going out into the road and that is kind of like, you know, like when a cartoon character smells a pie, <laughs> it's kind of what it was like for me, kind of like floated in here and I was like, okay. And I just like how like narrow it is and just it's kind of, you know, stuffed in this little corner here kind of. And I got looking around a little bit and I found a sign that explained that um, this shrine is a bit famous for solving eye problems. So if you have an eye disease and the reason is because there's like a old story of an old couple that had an eye problem and the deity from this shrine took the disease from them and put it into his own right eye. So I'm assuming that that means it screwed up his eye to help out the old people. So if you have eye problems, this is the place to come. And uh, this deity is something of an optometrist. If you haven't noticed, I don't really have any plan. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of like, I'm here to catch a vibe. 
So I'm gonna just find things as I catch my vibe and sharing with people. So I hope you're into that because that's what we're into right now. And I'm walking down the street here and a lot of the videos are probably gonna start with me saying that. I'm walking down the street here and I come across a museum. This is a kanji museum. And a kanji is, for those who are not aware, a character from the Japanese writing system that they adopted from the Chinese writing system. And it's like an ideograph, right? So it, it has pronunciation kind of built into it that can be kind of vague. And then it has a meaning built into it. So think about like, um, like math, right? Like the division sign. Like you see that and you know that means like, you know, cut things up by the certain numbers that are being applied to it, right? Or multiplication or addition or whatever. Those signs, those are like ideographs, sort of. So that's what a kanji is for the layman. And the kanji museum, a kanji is super important to their culture, like ridiculously important to their culture. And the kanji museum, I didn't go inside or anything, but they've got this display on the outside. And what's kind of neat about this is they apparently have a kanji every year, like a new one and they let people vote so they're having like a thing where you can go over there and you can have a piece of paper and a pen and you can write down like, what is this year's kanji and like okay this is what i think and then i guess at the end of it they'll count them up and maybe or they just find the best ones in the group and then there's a committee that chooses i'm not sure i didn't look into the details of how it's chosen but it's like a community thing they let everybody kind of choose what the kanji of the year will be and uh the wall actually has past year's kanjis and it selects it's not like a sequential list of them it's like random ones that seem like maybe from years that are important or whatever so some of them have to do with like the olympics or past olympics and some of them have got to do with like disasters um the other one that off the top of my head is uh matsu it means like kind of like the end of something that was 1999 so obviously 1999 is the end of the millennium so into a new one we went and that was the end so they just got like you know a little smorgasbord of kanji knowledge to learn about if you're into it there's also a museum, but I didn't go in. I don't think I'm gonna go in either. I'm not trying to catch a vibe in the Kanji Museum for like three hours. I'll get lost in there. I get like kind of sucked into this stuff. <laughs> I've wandered my way over to the Eastern side of Kyoto. And this is where there's a lot of temples and shrines and like old style, like even more so than other parts of Kyoto, but old style buildings and shops and things like that. And it's all kind of sit sitting in a, not a forest, but like up against kind of some hills that then goes into a forest. Like a lot of nature and stuff is over on this side. It's not super urbanized, even though it's like a block away from super urbanized. And this is a pretty famous temple area or shrine, shrine complex that I'm inside of right here. And something of note is how much sound comes out of this particular one because they have these three big bells on ropes. And when you go to pray at this particular shrine, you walk up and you actually just kind of throw your money over the railing, which is instead of like dropping it into a box, it's like, Ugh, like throw it over the railing. And then you grab onto the rope and you pull it left and right and it makes the bell jingle. There's actually signs here that say like, use, like, use the rope left and right. <laughs> My understanding is that's like supposed to like alert the spirit or the, the guardian or deity to your presence, like kind of like an alarm clock or whatever. But um, if that's true, like this dude isn't getting a lot of sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he's getting a lot of, he's getting a lot of bells going down. I was making some video over here of these signs and I noticed that this one says like, wave your hand above the thing, right? And it's gonna like make a noise, but I don't, uh, I don't understand what that noise is. <laughs> it's early December and the fall colors are still popping a bit down here. I'm kind of hoping to hunt down some more fall colors if they're still happening. I need to do some research. There's areas of Kyoto where it's like amazing. I think I'm a little late for it though. Walking around this area with so few people is wild. <laughs> I've never seen it anywhere near this empty. And again, like I said, I'm not an expert about Kyoto or whatever, but every time I've ever been down here, which is in a lot of different seasons, I think I've been here each season actually, it's always crowded, like always. So to see things like this and have the opportunity to see it like this, it's pretty wild. <laughs> just the idea that I'm gonna be able to walk up and down some of these streets that are usually just like completely nuts to butts crammed. I, uh, I feel really fortunate to have the opportunity to do this. And just kind of like, you know, catch the vibe differently than how it will be once we're out of this bad time. Will we ever be out of this bad time? Please be out of this bad time.
There seems to be an endless number of little streets like this. It's getting to be a little late in the day. It's like 4.30, so I think a lot of these shops are closed. I don't know if it's that or they're Corona closed, but it's still a really cool atmosphere. Seems like this place might be tired of YouTubers and Instagram models. This place is absolutely touristy. That's basically the whole purpose of it. I'm sure in years past, it was more of like a residential area, but nowadays, all the walking streets and stuff, there's no place for cars, et cetera, et cetera. This has just been turned into a tourist haven. But they somehow managed to maintain a level of authenticity that is admirable. I'm not quite sure what they've done to keep the gaudy out that usually comes with tourists, but they've really nailed it down. I don't think I've noticed it before when I've been over here because it's been so busy, but the actual area is legit. The moment I said that things are legit, I walked around a corner and there's a food truck. <laughs> Feels a little less legit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of the centerpiece of this area is a temple called Kiyomizu Dera. And the closer I get to it, the more crowded it gets. But still, like, it used to be like, you know, you'd stand in a line like you were at Disneyland or whatever <laughs> to get up this hill. And now it's just like you gotta weave back and forth, which is significantly more simple. I have made it up to Kiyomizu Dera, and I just looked in the camera. Man, I look gorgeous right now. <laughs> like the sunset. This is like the perfect light. It's like the perfect filter. It's like beautiful. <laughs> so this is kind of like up a hill out of the little walking town area that I was walking through earlier with the classical feel, except that it also had a food truck. And this is sort of like one of the biggest tourist draws in Tokyo, or Tokyo, in Kyoto. And um, as everything else, I mean, it's essentially empty. There are people here. It's not like completely empty, but by comparison's sake, it's like, I've never seen anything like this before. Little notes about this little area. It's cool because once you get up here, you've got a pretty cool view overlooking Kyoto. And with the sun setting kind of behind the mountains and stuff, it's all just a cool vibe. And I'm still here in a time where we're getting to see some of the fall colors. Might be a little dark for the camera to pick them up, but I can still see some explosive reds and some nice oranges and stuff. Another little note about the temple is that it's got this viewing deck, right? That everybody walks out onto and they take pictures down over the valley and down into the, you know, down in the city. But the viewing deck is angled like this, like it's like slanted. So when you're walking on it, it almost feels like you're gonna tumble your way down. It's not steep, like you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta be careful. It's just like, I'm a little drunk. <laughs> it's what it makes it feel like when you walk out on that thing. Uh, this is like a tactile little moment I thought I'd point out. And um, because it's all like wooden flooring and everything, it's kind of like being inside of a Japanese castle. When you walk, you can hear every step and you, you kind of feel the building a little more than if it was made of, you know, concrete or steel or something more modern. Uh, there's something about the building. The building's a bit alive and it's just a fun experience to check it out. I really look great. Look at that bag. Leaving the temple area, you end up walking out down this hill. And I think I'm going maybe towards a waterfall I'm probably not gonna be able to see because like, it's legit dark. Actually, the camera is probably brighter than what it looks like in real life. That's probably more like, yeah, that looks a little more like what I'm looking at with my eyes. All right. <laughs> but uh, it's a nice change because even though it wasn't like super crowded or anything, it's super peaceful now. Look at this, hold on a second here. Let me go around this corner or this tree, you can see that uh, pagoda kind of like sticking up out of the out of the top of the world there. Like, let's see if we can get that one right there. <laughs> Just kind of caught my eye. The silence though in this little forest is really refreshing. I'm gonna take a slight detour and maybe check out that pagoda. I think the one that I saw is just like right up around the corner. Kyoto is awesome because when you come across a pagoda, you're not sure if it's the same pagoda you saw from a distance or not, because there's so many. 
water is super important this temple and it's not really out of the ordinary to have a place where you can purify yourself or cleanse yourself basically with uh, some of the water on the ground where they'll have like a cup on a stick and you dip it into like the the, the, the temple or shrine water and you will sometimes put some of it in your mouth and rinse it and then spit it not into the new water but on the ground or wash your hands with it a little bit or something like that it's really really common but this place has got kind of a unique take on it where they have got a structure up against the the wall and um, the shrine area is up in this hill behind me but this structure here has got water coming down through it and it's a big structure it's not like a small thing that you walk up to and you climb up these stairs and there's these sticks that have got like their long sticks with cups on the ends of them and you reach out with them and pull it with, from one of the three streams that's coming off of the roof of the building and that's what you would use to you know you could drink out of that or do whatever it is that you do with it i'm not actually clear exactly if this is a drinking one or just a hand washing one but they've got a way to sterilize these cups on the long sticks with ultraviolet light like that's all set up and ready to go so i don't know if that was pre-covid or post-covid but it's i've never I've never seen that before I realized that the way I just explained that made it sound like maybe people are supposed to be drinking out of that ladle, but you're not supposed to touch your lips with that ladle, even though they've got a, a, a ultraviolet light purification system. <laughs> you're supposed to use the ladle to pour the water into your hands and then move the water from your hands to your lips. You know what I'm saying? So don't like be that foreigner that comes here and like starts like drinking out of the ladle. Like don't do that. <laughs> even if there is an ultraviolet light system, I don't think that you're still supposed to do that here. Everything is really closing up as I walk back down out into the city and still in like the touristy area and one shop caught my eye and it's a toothbrush specialty shop. <laughs> that's, not, that's not expected. All right, like food truck aside, this place still feels pretty legit. And my comparison is where I live. We live in a Saksa still, still <laughs> right now. We're moving soon, that's why I said still, and that still isn't, it's a bad thing. And that is the, like, one of the most touristy areas of the Tokyo region. And it feels more like just a mess. It doesn't feel like it has a theme the way that this part of Kyoto feels. This feels like the city ordinance or whatever has been like, okay, look, you got to make sure that the buildings maintain a feel and, like, they've got to be done a certain way. And... The, the the buildings in Asakusa sort of just feel like that people are just kind of allowed to do whatever they want and it doesn't have like a cohesive theme. It's like when you go to Disneyland and you go, everything is just so, like, you know what I mean? Like they, 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 they're really, really, the details are important and like the way things feel and the way things smell and everything. This isn't like that that level of like, you know, crazy as far as the level of like control that it feels like that the people are doing like the city design or whatever are having. But it definitely feels like there is a theme that they're aiming for and they're actually hitting it pretty good. Except of course for that, that food truck, which, <laughs> why was there a food truck? <laughs> Bit of a weird coincidence for dinner here that um, I ate another meal where I couldn't film, but it was for a different reason. I could have probably talked in there. I don't think these people would have cared, but I was sitting right next to a big speaker that was just like blaring music and the YouTube algorithms would have just been like, nope, you can't have the ad revenue from your video if this is it. We are going to give all this ad revenue to somebody else. So... Sometimes I think, like, can I sit so I like, should I ask, like, should I sit someplace else? Like, is it okay? But there weren't very many seats in there that were, like, just for one person. Anyway, all that off my head. The um, meal that I got was cool. It was really good. It was a katsu kare daisu, which is, like, a Japanese curry sauce that he made with, like, a whole bunch of different... It was, like, a homemade stuff, you know what I mean? Like, this little cafe place is, like, a homemade type of cafe thing. So they made it with a bunch of spices and vegetables and beef. And then he puts like a piece of deep fried meat on top. And there's a little salad and stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty delicious. And I've uh, actually walked around a lot today. 
So that like injection of calories probably isn't going to be too bad. I was probably at a calorie deficit for the day. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't like eating a meal like that big for dinner usually because you feel all like, like why are you trying to go to sleep or whatever. But that's how the cards rolled out today. So um, I don't know. It's probably like six or seven o'clock. It got really dark there, didn't it? Uh, 717. So I am going to just head back to the hotel, try to get to bed a little bit early tonight, and then uh, figure out something to do tomorrow, because I really have no idea. Um, somebody on Instagram turned me on to a burger place though, so that might be my goal. Like I'll try to <laughs> wrap my day around going over and getting a burger, see what's over in that part of the city. I don't know. I made it to the uh, hotel room, and this hotel room is actually the reason that I'm in Kyoto right now. <laughs> um, Basically, what's going on is that Katie's taking the GLPT, and she is taking it on Sunday, I think. And it is now Thursday before that Sunday where she's taking the GLPT, which is like a Japanese language proficiency test. So even though she's on vacation right now, she can't leave the city because of the GLPT date, which is, again, the Japanese language proficiency test. <laughs> so um, for her winter break, we were going to go down to Totori and... Um, Hyogo, uh, Hyogo, 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 I think is the name of the prefecture with Kobe, right? I think I have that right. Um, and we're going to just do our normal like rent a car and like check out that area and see what's up. But um, to get down there, we had to come through Kyoto anyway. So I started thinking about like, well, I could go to Kyoto and spend a couple days there and just kind of see what it's like without tourists, right? And I was like, well, hotels are kind of expensive, blah, blah, blah. So I tossed it around my head and then I checked the prices of hotels right now. And you can keep in mind there's a lot of hotels in Kyoto, but very few tourists right now. So the prices are rock bottom cheap. So this hotel room that I'm standing in, I'll show it to you, was about 7,000 yen. So it's like 65 bucks or something USD for three nights, like total. Like not per night, but like for all three nights. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna if I'm if I'm gonna pay the money to go down to that area, I'm gonna pay a little extra money to spend three days in Kyoto. Like it's almost free, basically. Um, you'd expect that kind of price per day, to be honest with you. So the hotel room is very clearly an apartment that has been converted into hotels. Like you can tell just by the way the outside is like you access from the outside. It's just strange. Like it's not a motel. Like <laughs> you don't have motels like roadside motels in the same way. So it's obviously a, it's obviously an old apartment. But um, I'll put the camera in the corner so you can see the entire room. Two beds. It's fine. Whatever. If I get a buddy, buddy's got a place to stay. And uh, I haven't even looked around at anything else, but I've got my own little, let's do it this way. Now you guys are in the film. <laughs> I think that's how that works, right? Okay, so um, then I've got my own like little, you know, vanity, whatever. And <laughs> this is what's like to be tall in Japan, by the way. Like, uh, let me put this camera where my face is so you guys can see that's what it looks like for my eye level. <laughs> so if I want to do anything, I got to crouch way down, just like look at myself in a mirror. It's brutal. Um, then we've got a uh, toilet and that's a very nice looking toilet. It's like really clean in here. And if I spin around, then I've got a little area for a bathing situation that I've got, but I can already tell that it's going to be a bit of a bummer, dude. Because if I come in here and I look like everything is good, that's my head touching the ceiling. <laughs> oh, but it goes up. Oh, oh legit, I can stand. <laughs> well, it's cold up there. <laughs> this is the Kyoto part one video that you didn't happen to be there for the filming of. Um, I was gonna say that if anybody has been around for a while, they've probably seen a couple of videos I've made in the past. One of them was the silent video that I made that you also weren't a part of, mm -hmm. and you were in America when I shot that. And I had anticipated to film this entire Kyoto series as a video with no speaking. Mm -hmm. So it was just gonna be all basically told through visual storytelling. To be honest, I was not necessarily disappointed, but negatively surprised yeah so basically i was like i have like three or four days down there and i figured like it was going to be too much 
Like it was going to be too long with no dialogue. Mm. And then I also just like for some reason I just started talking and I just like I just can't shut my stupid face. Mm. So I just kept making the video like kind of like normal. Like now. So yeah, just like now. <laughs> so it sort of ended up being I, I was going to do that, but then it ended up being more like the Hitchhiking series. Because there's so much of me just like explaining mm. things and no Katie there. So I kind of felt like it almost, I sort of filmed some of it like I was going to make it silent even after I started talking. So the B-roll and stuff is like tons of it. But then it ended up being like more like the hitchhiking thing. So I feel like it almost kind of fell between the two. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is the first video of, I don't, I think there might be three that I filmed in for, Kyoto. For Kyoto, I wow. think so, yeah. And then... Just need talking a lot. <laughs> yeah. I said I don't know how to shut my face. So then, then after that, we're going to be having some videos from, um, uh, Hyogo, Totori, and Kobe, not in that order. Not in that order, no. Mm. And Katie will be along for those. So make sure that you are subscribed and you have the bell rang and all those things so that you don't miss all the exciting things that are on the way. And if you want to hear Eric talking a lot more, maybe not in an auditory way, but in a text way, you can go on to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or, or Discord. He's really chatty in there. Um, I'm mildly. Yeah. Like, I'm don't, minimally. Don't, you, by the time this is up, it'll be a week of will pass and you you may not be in there anymore. You never know. Sometimes you get distracted. I do get distracted. And the whole way that we ended up making videos is through the support that we get on Patreon. So you know how like P PBS, how do they say it? Like viewers brought to you by like viewers you. like you. Yeah, it's like that's like exactly patrons like you. That's exactly what we've got going on. So if you want to help us continue to make videos, you can check out Patreon, and there are perks and stuff like that over there for the people that help us out. Oh, I need to make postcards. And, oh, is it the first again already? Oh that's yeah, the it's fifth. The fifth. Son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, so we need to pick a picture and print it and then send it. And everything is going to be linked down below. And as usual, comments and bells and like buttons help out our video with the robot overlords. Mm. I think we got everything. Yeah, I think we did good. Okay. And I insulted you like at least three times. I should stop talking now. <laughs> Shut your face up, Eric.